everyone, my name is Sarah New. Uh, preferred pronouns are they, them, but all pronouns are okay with me. And I currently work as a community director uh, among the executive council in Forefront, New York City, a church in Brooklyn. I work part-time, I've been here for about a couple of years, and I wanted to share um, some examples of three different types of sermons I've given that kind of help gently introduce socialist or leftist ideas without being really heavy-handed about it. Um, and the reason why I try to navigate this balance is because my church is about 500 people, um, multiracial, middle, upper class, um, and I, you know, I would say is generally progressive and liberal, but generally not left left. Um, and the sort of more radical ideas associated with leftist politics, whether it's abolition, even decriminalization of sex work, uh, socialism, just to name a few, are not so much in our mainstream discourse. And, you know, our philosophy is very much about how do we bring people along instead of just being like, this is who we are, get with it or not, as a church. And that's, that was our approach towards becoming LGBT affirming. And so I try to take a similar approach when it comes to talking about leftist ideas uh, through sermons. So uh, context about uh, our, my church, as I mentioned, um, as example I like to give is that, you know, from a pulpit, you're much more likely to hear a sermon given by, you know, someone in our church. I preach only about once a month um, about how Jesus stands up for the marginalized. And then typically then the, the pastor or the sermonizer will give uh, a list of examples of people grouped by identity, usually by race. And though I, I consider it like a good liberal sermon. To my mind, a leftist or socialist sermon goes a step further and looks at the material mechanisms by which people are marginalized. How sex workers, for instance, are oppressed by criminal, the criminalization of their work, by the lack of labor rights, by our laws around migration. How um, the lack of guaranteed housing, poor healthcare support for mental illness, and sort of general lack of labor to protections in the workplace and guarantees of a minimum wage make certain people, usually black or brown, more likely to get the police called upon them. And so to my mind, I left the sermons in the case of let's say police uh, brutality and murder, it's not just look at what do the police do when they show up, it's unpack how it's racially unfair, but to ask a question, why do we call the police in the first place? You know, why is it necessary for them to show up? Are they really needed to solve the problems we're asking them to solve? And maybe we should think about a whole scale abolition of police and prisons. So, I have not, you know, given that particular sermon yet, but I want to share three, I hope someone will, I hope to share three different types of sermons that kind of represent, I think, three different ways to kind of gently introduce socialism or leftist ideas without being super, like I mentioned, heavy handed about it. And without, I think, triggering people. So we have a lot of ex-evangelicals in our congregation, triggering people uh, with the baptism of po certain political ideologies by the pulpit. I definitely don't want to claim that it's a straight line from the Gospels to socialism. I think there, there are some leaps that you make and that leaps require political education. Um, but I do think there's a lot in our scriptures and in our tradition that can be fertile ground to make those leaps. Um, and like I said, our congregation, as I alluded to, a lot of us come from evangelical backgrounds and so there's a high emphasis on scripture in all our sermons. And in general, what you know, even if you don't come from an evangelical context, my sense of things is that if you wanna introduce radical ideas that will push your congregation a little further, you're gonna to have to work doubly hard to connect those radical ideas to the core tenets of your church. Whether if, if you're a Methodist, maybe you're connecting back to something in the Wesleyan tradition, or you know, Presbyterian, something in the Calvinist tradition, or for us, like something, it has to be really scriptural. Because when you do that, you're allowing people to kind of soften and be like, okay, this, I, I now can see how this foreign thing is connected to something familiar and reassuring for me. And so um, the three sermons, categories of sermons I'm gonna highlight is the first one is a theoretical, uh, second one is political, the third one is pastoral. All three sermons I'll give examples of these categories obviously touch on all three, but are going to be anchored in one category. So the first, the first one is a more theoretical sermon. I gave this in May 28, 2018. Uh, it's titled Imagination as Resistance, Capitalism and the Commons. Um, and I look at the book of Acts chapter 2. You can look up all these sermons on our website or podcast feed. Uh, I think I have also a personal website where I list my sermons, uh, sarahnew.com. The, when books, Acts chapter 2, where it says that all believers had everything in, uh, shared everything in common and there was no one in need. 
And I use this sermon not just to talk about, you know, helping people in need, but to talk about why it is that we see property, private property as sacrosanct. I talk about the process of enclosures and the loss of the commons in England. I quote um, the church fathers as well and how, you know, uh, John Chrysostom, the Archbishop of Constantinople, says, not to enable the poor to share in our goods is to steal from them and deprive them of life. The goods we possess are not ours, but theirs. So you can see I'm quoting scripture and church tradition to kind of make the point that, hey, our tradition actually predates capitalism. So I think it's natural to assume there's going to be some friction between Christianity and capitalism. And let's like explore that a little bit more. Um, in my sermon, you know, I also talk about alternative perspectives on land from Native American leaders. I talk about community land trusts as an example, of how to decommodify de housing. And lastly, because we always like to end our sermons on a practical note, um, I challenged my congregation to donate towards a crisis fund that we could use to help congregants in need. It's not huge, but it's a small step. And this year in the pandemic, we were able to do just that. We raised about $20,000 to help really anyone who requests need uh, help. We have a care team set up to deliver groceries, sign gift cards, sign just cash gifts. Um, and it's an amazing way to just see like just, you know, a small way of wealth redistribution. Um, and so I call this my theoretical message because it's probably the most explicitly anti-capitalist message that tackles a theoretical idea, property, and tries to dismantle it, complicate it, at least through scripture and through tradition and history. The second type of sermon I'm going to talk about is the sort of the political sermon. Um, and this, this sermon, I, it was titled Quit Being an Ally. It was given February 20th, 2020. So here I talked about how we need to stop thinking in terms of allyship and more in terms of comradeship. You know, allyship is about helping someone out of charity or sympathy or even empathy. And comradeship might involve that, but also it means acting for justice for all because you see how your self-interest and your liberation is, is bound with other everyone else's. Like it's, a nece it's necessary for you to work towards justice, not just a nice thing. And I, I emphasize that distinction in, in my sermon because I really think that distinguishes, to my mind, leftist organizing from liberal organizing. Um, because it, the latter tends to be what churches want to do. Love your neighbor because it's good, because Jesus said so. But the former, and, and so it's all about the attitudes of the heart. But a more leftist form of organizing kind of involves those attitudes, but also involves a very materialist analysis of how that we're structurally dependent and interdependent on one another. So because we're a very scripture heavy um, church, I brought up Exodus and the mixed multitudes that went up with the Israelites in their exodus from Egypt. And most scholars uh, see the mixed multitudes as most likely poor oppressed Egyptians who were not treated as badly as the Hebrew or Israelite slaves, but they were treated pretty poorly as well. And they decided not just to give their gold and jewelry, jewelry as some of the Egyptian neighbors did out of an act of allyship, but they decided to throw their lot in with the Israelites and say, us too, we're, we're, we're oppressed as well. We suffer maybe a little bit less, but we're gonna seek liberation with you, with the most oppressed peoples, instead of cozying up with the elites. Um, and I, you know, I love history, so I threw in Bacon's Rebellion in Virginia as well, and the rebellion of white indentured servants of African Americans and how it posed this like ripe possibility of cross-racial solidarity. Um, in, in a true robust sense. And so in, in this sermon, I, I don't use the word capitalism, I don't use the word socialism or Marxism, but a lot of the ideas I introduce are certainly from that backdrop. And I think more importantly, I was trying to introduce a materialist political way of thinking about organizing on a range of issues, um, rather than just a, a simple charity or sympathy-based uh, liberal model of organizing. All right. The last sermon I gave uh, on this topic, the, this is the pastoral category. I gave it August 19th, 2020. You can find it on YouTube, this one. It's entitled Dealing with Tyranny in the Workplace. And I kept this, um, you know, very pastoral and personal. I opened with an example of being mistreated by an abusive boss. I shared with permission a similar story of a congregant. And I kind of meditated uh, on Psalm chapter eight and how the last line is, um, a prayer for the man who is of the earth to strike terror no more and talk about how many of us have lived in terror of our bosses and so um in this sermon is definitely tilted towards offering direct personal care or what i would call symptomatic relief 
but I tried to make sure even though it was a pastoral oriented sermon to integrate some political analysis with them and to kind of encourage my congregants to, if they're having trouble in the workplace, talk to their colleagues, maybe form a committee together, maybe you can even call it a union, um, to, to one, see that they're not alone in their grievances, and two, to actually build power together, because that's the only way you will permanently ensure that there's a bulwark against um, the kind of incessant advances and demands by managers and bosses and capitalists. So, um, you know, that's, I, I wasn't necessarily talking about ex theoretical stuff here. I wasn't talking about how wage labor is inherently exploitative from Marxist perspective. It was a very pastoral sermon with some political analysis. Um, and it, it was a kind of a powerful experience to see that sermon because it was live on Facebook. It was a virtual church experience and see how many people really resonated with the experience of a bad boss. And even to see like f bad bosses confessing ways in which they had mistreated workers in the past and they've come to realize it and what have you. So I hope these three types of sermons give you some um, fodder for thought and some tools to think about how to work. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at my website, sarahnew.com, S-R-H-N-G-U.com. Thank you.